Hello, today I just want to talk to you about safely using custom indicators in your own code. On screen I have a script that I'm going to be using as the example for this, but the same concept will apply if you're using a script or an expert advisor or embedding a custom indicator inside your own custom indicator. As the example for this, I'm going to be calling the ATR custom indicator. This is already supplied by MetaQuotes. I've just taken a copy of it and I've put it in this folder, Orchard Safe Custom Indicator. So just to go through what this script does, I'm simply setting the period to the default 14. Uh, I have no inputs because I'm not trying to demonstrate anything to do with inputs. This is just how to use the indicators. And then I'm simply calling iCustom. And I've broken up the call to iCustom into four different lines here for the four different sections basically of the iCustom call. The first two arguments are the symbol and time frame to use. So symbol and period, I'm getting those from the chart. The next line is the name of the custom indicator that I want to call. The next line here is the arguments to that custom indicator. And one of the reasons I've chosen ATR is it only has one argument. So I'm just passing in the period, which I've set above here. And then the last two arguments are the buffer number and the bar number that I want to return the information for. Uh, ATR again has only one buffer, so that's buffer number zero. And I'm just going to be pulling in bar number one. I'm choosing bar number one. I could choose anything, uh, but I don't want to choose bar number zero because I want a number that doesn't change and bar number one will be constant through this video. And all I'm doing once I've got that result, I'm just calling a message box and displaying the result of the ATR. So let me just compile that. And you can see no errors in the compile. And if I now go to my MetaTrader 4, I can run this and you'll see the very simple demonstration here. So I have MetaTrader 4 here, and I've already loaded a 14 period ATR in here, just so that we can see the results. And if I now scroll down to the script, safe custom indicator, I run that and it tells me ATR is 0 0.002193. Uh, that's a greater level of accuracy than I get in the data window. If I hover over bar number one in the data window, I've got 0.0022. So I'm getting the same answer back. That's all good so far. When I run this, it's expecting to find this ATR indicator in that location. And by default, these are underneath the indicators folder. So indicators is implied here. And then it's orchard safe custom indicator ATR.ex4. And the double backslashes are because the backslash is a special character, so I need to include two of those to get the backslash for the folder delimiter. If for some reason I make a mistake when I'm typing this, and let me just insert a extra space there, easy enough to miss, I can compile this. Still no compiler errors, but if I now go back to MetaTrader 4 again, and now I run my safe custom indicator, I get ATR is zero because the call failed. It couldn't find that custom indicator file, that EX4 file. That file is loaded at runtime and not at compile time. So when I compile, the compiler is quite happy. It has no idea what I'm going to be doing. But at runtime, then it tries to go out and find that file, doesn't find it, and so I get this result zero back. If you look down here in the experts log that I've got showing as well, you can see that there was an error message, cannot open the file so that's something you can look for. But if we go back here and I'll just fix that problem, fix that, compile it, go back to MetaTrader, run that again. Yes, I'm getting an answer again, so that's all good. But if then for some reason after building this script, that file, that atr.exe file moves because I'm reorganizing my files or I've changed the name or done something, so it's no longer in that same location, I'll get an error again, and I'll just go to the Windows folder and simulate that for you. So here's the folder where I have the atr.ex4 saved, and I'll just delete this. So for some reason, I've reorganized my files and it's no longer there. And now back in MetaTrader 4, if I run this, I get the same problem, ATR is zero, because it can't find that file. So how do we solve those two problems, making sure that the file is there when we compile it, and that we don't suffer if the file moves or changes name later. And there are several steps I'm going to go through to show you how to do that. Now, the first and obvious step is to handle the error so that at least if this didn't work, I will know that it didn't work. And that's just two simple lines. 
First calling reset last error just before the iCustom call will reset the error number. And then by calling get last error after the call, I'll see if there has been an error. And if there has, I'm just going to display a message box. So get last error will return zero if there were no errors. And if there is an error, this will return an error number, which you can deal with if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to have a message box that says that failed. So if I compile this again, it's still not checking. That file is still, let me go back to, that file is still missing. But the compiler, as I said, will still work because it doesn't know if that file is going to be there or not. And now I can go to MetaTrader 4 and I get the message that failed. I still have the message box showing the result, but at least I can see that it failed. But that's not a great answer. Um, it's one thing to know you've had an error. It's much better to not get an error in the first place. And that's also not a very difficult thing to address. So back to the code. And what I want to do is effectively take a copy of that atr.ex4 file when I compile this script and embed that ex4 file inside the script so that it doesn't change. And I can do that with a resource. So hash resource, and then I will just copy this. Now, the iCustom function defaults to finding files inside indicators, where resource does not. So I have to include indicators folder in this path. So by doing that, this file will be located at compile time and embedded in the script. And in fact, if I add that extra space, so this is no longer an existing file, and attempt to compile this, I get a compiler error to say that it couldn't find that file. So first problem where I said that I could compile things and there was no check to see if the file existed, that's resolved by using the resource because if that file doesn't exist, the compiler will fail. And let me just go back to the Windows Explorer and I'll put the atr.exe file back because I did delete that a couple of minutes ago. All right, so the file's back where it belongs. Now back in the editor and I've taken out that extra space if I compile this now, that passes the compiler test at least. So the resource is able to find that file, knows that it's in the right place. I still have a problem though, because in the iCustom, I'm not actually using the resource. This is still just looking for the file at runtime. Uh, now to fix that, I need to change the syntax here to tell it to use the resource file. And the syntax is basically to use the same path name, but replace this leading double backslash with two colons. So I'll just do that. And now this statement is going to load that file from the resource. This string must exactly match the string used here in the resource. And then the iCustom will call the embedded resource that I've captured up here. So. I've solved the problem that the file didn't exist at compile time. Now I know it must exist and I'm going to use that file from the compile. So let me just compile this. I'll go to MetaTrader 4. I run that and this works. Great. Uh, and just to prove this, I can now go to this Windows file, delete that again. back to MetaTrader 4, and I'm still getting an answer. So I no longer get that error because the file's missing because the EX4 file was embedded inside the script when I compiled it. I would take this just a step further, just to be safe, because even though I can embed this resource and make sure that that exists inside the script, there is still nothing to prevent me from having a typing error here in the iCustom. And if I just put that file back into the folder for a moment, put that back so that I can compile it. Now I can compile. The file has been embedded inside my script. But if I go to MetaTrader 4, I get that failed. And that is happening because although I've asked the iCustom to use a resource, 
this is not the same resource that I embedded earlier. There is no check at compile time to see that these names match the resources that have been embedded. So the step I would take to fix that problem is to use a define statement. And now remembering that the resource uses the double backslash to lead and the iCustom uses the double colon, I'll take these double backslashes from here and then I simply change the resource to So I'm defining a string ATR indicator, which is the full path name without the leading backslash. I'm defining a resource that is named leading backslash. Remember the two backslashes become one because it's a special character. I'm declaring a resource of backslash plus the ATR indicator plus this string. And then whenever I'm going to use one of these resources inside iCustom, I would change this statement to be double colon plus ATR indicator. Effectively the same thing I've done here with resource, but in this case I'm putting the two colons in the lead. So now by doing that, any change I make here must be applied to both the resource and the iCustom. So let me compile there. That works. If I make a typing mistake here and I try to compile, I get that error with the resource file not found. And I know because I'm using a defined string that I have the same value here inside the iCustom call. So I'll compile that again. Go back to MetaTrader 4, run my script, and I'm getting that answer and I'll just remove the file from Windows Explorer just to finally prove that this works. So that's the atr.ex4 file. I'll delete that. Back to MetaTrader. And I'm still getting an answer. So that's how you can protect yourself and make sure that the files that you want are there at compile time. And also that if those files change or move later, then your scripts, experts, indicators won't break. Of course, if you ever recompile this script after that file has moved, then you'll have to make sure that everything's in the right place to compile again. And it also means by embedding this that if there are any improvements or bug fixes in that EX4 file, you won't get those unless you recompile this script or expert again. But this does protect you from random changes, which can quite often happen, in particular if you're building, say, an expert advisor and then putting it somewhere else inside a different MetaTrader installation. So you might be building in one development environment and deploying somewhere else in your live MetaTrader. Then you don't need to worry about copying all of those custom indicators with you. They are embedded inside the experts or wherever you've used them by using this technique. So just to cover that again quickly, first I define the name of the ATR indicator and I have to include indicators in this string followed by the full path to that indicator. I'm using double backslashes as the path delimiter because the backslash is a special character. There is a restriction on resource that the total name of this resource cannot exceed 63 characters. So it's not without its problems. So as long as you make sure that you don't have your, eight, your uh, EX4s buried too deeply in your folder structure, you should be okay. But that's just something to watch for. So then I have hash resource, double backslash, plus the ATR indicator, which I defined here. And then in my iCustom call, I begin with double colon, plus the ATR indicator from the definition above. And that way you will know that the iCustom calls are calling the embedded resource and you're safe from any future changes. So just a quick tip today. Um, I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, please click the like button. And if you want to see more of these type videos from us, then click subscribe. And if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when we release new videos. So until next time, thank you for watching.